Ah, <sighs> dungeons. The perfect grind. You go in there, you get XP that boosts your gear and allows you to use better gear. So that XP is very valuable. It's one of the best kind of skills to grind. And who would have thought that the best way to grind dungeon XP is actually ritual suicide. <laughs> Hello random people on the internet, my name is Banana, and today I'm here to talk about how to grind up Catacombs XP really, really fast. This is a way that has not been used by a lot of the top players because they actually want to get kills and stuff, but this is going to be the fastest way to get XP. Now, I will preface it, you are not going to get boss loot from this, you are not going to get anything, but this is going to save you a lot of time, especially if you're running with a team that's not abusing like Tiger Pet and a bunch of the strategies to make the boss kill really easy. This is going to basically just give you the most XP in the most efficient way. So if you want to catch up in leveling and you don't really need the profit that you can get from dungeons or you don't need the Wither Essence, then this is actually a really good strategy to just grind out a lot of XP. So before we get to the strategy, my analytics say that only a small percentage of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So if this video helps you out at all in grinding catacombs XP, I would really appreciate if you would go down below and subscribe. It's free and you can always undo it later. So yeah, for the strategy, you basically want to have as many mages as possible with maybe one healer. Mages are just the best class for clearing rooms with something like the Spirit Scepter, the Ice Spray Wand, the Voodoo Doll, all of these are really good at not only locking down big enemies that are going to be attacking you like the mini bosses, but you can pretty much AoE clear every single room and you're going to burn through them really quickly. Now the reason I say that you might want a healer is if you do struggle with something like a Shadow Assassin, a Frozen Adventurer, or even a Trap Room, it is really nice to have that Wish ability that they the healer can pop. The healer is pretty much just going to be your saving grace in there. If you're close to dead, healer saves you. But one tough thing about the strategy is that the healer might have a difficult time hitting their milestones because the strategy is pretty much speed running a bunch of rooms and you need to sort of split up to do this. And healers well on their own are pretty much going to get no milestone and they need to get up to milestone three to get their XP. But it is sort of hard and I'll explain why it's hard for the healer when I actually get to what the strategy is. Two other things that I think are sort of helpful are a stonk pickaxe or a gold pick with efficiency 5 and a uh, golden axe with efficiency 5 as well. You'll see why this is useful later but these are just some nice items to have and then obviously you know just your basic dungeon items you want all your good mage weapons. You pretty much just need to be able to clear rooms really quickly in this strategy and there are a couple good armor sets that I can recommend you running while you're trying to do this. So obviously Zombie Soldier with a Bonzo Mask has been the staple of what I've been using for a long time right now. It's really good. It's <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. There's been a lot said about this armor set because it is that good. You can revive with the Bonzo Mask. But I think that there actually is a better choice if you're running with a bunch of late game people. And that armor set is actually going to be the Shadow Goggles with Adaptive Armor and Spirit Boots. So this is going to be a really good setup. And I'd say the main reason that this setup is so good is just because everything works so well with each other. The Shadow Goggles are going to make you deal 60% more damage to all undead monsters. If you don't know how you get this, you go and buy it from the Ophelia NPC. It's really cheap, it's less than a million coins, and maxing it out with Undead Essence is really easy. And then Adaptive Armor, I mean everyone knows why Adaptive is good, it's, it's just a straight up good set. But then you have the Spirit Boots, and these things are going to give you a lot of speed, a lot of intelligence, but that speed is going to be something that is really good in just trying to clear rooms, because you get 71 speed from Spirit Boots while in dungeons, and that is going to just make you zoom around the map while you're trying to grind things out. So now on to the actual strategy. It's going to start as any speedrun strategy does where you're going to rush the blood room. The blood room is going to take probably the biggest portion of the entire run just because there is a timer on how fast all these mobs spawn in. They don't spawn in instantly so it takes a while. So you want to rush the blood room within like 40 seconds I'd say. Optimal teams will get it below 20 seconds. My teams get it around 30 seconds but anything below 
like 50 seconds in the 40 second range is perfectly fine. You want to open that blood room with about three people running that way and then I'd send two people off on other paths to start clearing rooms. You need to clear as many rooms as possible and get them done as quick as possible before you actually go through blood. I would say even if you don't have rooms cleared before blood room is done, I would just go through blood room right when you finish it. Just have someone sort of chilling nearby clearing the close rooms and then once the watcher says he's done spawning them in, kill him and if you're not done with the rooms just go through anyways because we're not getting an S we're not getting the best score of all time when you're grinding this way that we're doing you're only gonna get something like a A every single time and if it's sometimes a B it doesn't really matter because the XP difference isn't that much so the only difference in this strategy compared to the other strategies that are used is pretty much that instead of going in the boss fight and actually shooting Thorn with the spirit bow and killing all the animals, you just kill yourself. <laughs> That's the, the most blunt way to put it. You go in as a team and you all take off your armor, stand in your own corner where the wolves spawn, and then eventually a wolf will spawn in and one-shot you, and then your run is over. It's as simple as that. And the reason that you do this is on any normal run, you can pull somewhere around 1200 experience. That's on like a S plus right there. You're getting 1200 class XP and catacombs XP. But if you're running this strategy, you're getting about like 1050 XP plus. You can get up to like 1100 XP sometimes with this strategy and you don't have to do the boss. Sure, there is the method of doing the boss with the tiger pet. You can have a one in 125 chance to actually just one shot the boss with the tiger pet, and that would be an amazing run, and you could get loot from there. But the amount of time that you're saving with not having to kill spirit bears at all and not relying on the RNG of the tiger pet is actually really, really nice. And then another thing that this strategy does is that the cooldown between every single dungeon closing is usually 90 seconds. Whenever you complete it, it gives you 90 seconds to chill in the dungeon, open chests, and figure out what kind of loot you're actually going to get and like get yourself organized while you're still in the dungeon. Then it kicks you out. But if you die, it's actually a 10 second timer. So you can start up your next run way, way faster, a minute and a half faster than any other team would be doing it if they are completing their runs. The one painful thing about this whole strategy is the fact that you don't get loot, but if you can get past that and you already aren't looking for loot and you're just grinding XP anyways, this strategy is amazing. So I do have a couple tips for some of the dungeon rooms that I feel like a lot of people don't know on just like how to make them faster, how to do them quicker. The main tip that I would say for every single room is to just know where all the important enemies spawn. You need to kill all the starred enemies really quickly and if you know where all of them are supposed to be, then it makes the run so much easier, but I do have some specific tips for four different rooms. My first tip is to honestly just skip the blaze room. Blaze room is too annoying to do. Like literally, unless you have a teammate who's using that one mod that's pretty much just cheating the game and cheating blaze room, I, I just wouldn't do this. I, I don't like bothering with it and it takes too much time. Taking the hit on the XP does not really hurt the run that much. You're still going to get a solid A. We're not going for S's here anyways. The blaze room is just really annoying. So the next tip that I want to say is about the teleport room. The teleport pad room is a puzzle that is really easy in like how you do it. You can sort of just randomly guess it. It's one of the few puzzles where you can just keep spamming and eventually get there. And a lot of people say, oh, go to the diagonals. That's the strategy. But there actually is a way better way to do this that a lot of people don't really know about. And that's the fact that every time you teleport, you always are looking in the same direction every time. So you can see every time I teleport in this one, I'm looking into that diamond room at that same teleport pad. I don't know how to explain this that well. People say I don't explain it well whenever I'm telling them about it. But basically, every time you step on a pad, you will always be looking towards the diamond room or whatever room it's going to be on your run. And once you get into that room, you're going to be staring directly at the pad that will take you to the middle. It's really obvious once you're actually in the room, and it's really easy then. But you do still have to randomly guess to get inside of the room, so you sort of just have to move around over and over until you get into that room that you've been staring at the whole time, and then boom, you're able to do this puzzle easily, and you can pull it out way faster than someone who's just randomly guessing and only gets it right on the last one. So I was talking about how you need a stonk pickaxe or something like that 
and that comes into play in this trap room so this trap room we actually do not have a door open over there but you can complete it and that's if you hop up on top of here and then you look over towards this chest and then you break with the pickaxe you can actually search the chest you have to get a weird angle sometimes but right there you can see i'm searching this chest it says this chest has already been searched and i can show you this door is not open so this is a really quick way to do this trap room this trap room is actually pretty it's pretty long if you're not doing it this way, but it's really easy if you use this method. So I definitely recommend whip out a pickaxe and do that real quick. All right. So when I was talking about the tree capitator or an axe, you can pretty much do the same thing that you can with the trap room in this button puzzle. So this puzzle is not that hard. You can figure it out pretty easy if you know what you're doing. But if you walk over here with your axe and then you just sort of go here you can see I opened that chest without actually doing the puzzle at all. So these cheese strategies can be really helpful in just getting your time down and clearing the rooms faster. Because at the end of the day, that is your goal, to clear the rooms fast. So if you can do it a little bit faster, even if it's not a hard thing like this button puzzle, why not? So I mentioned that healer might have a difficulty getting their milestone, and the reason for that is that you're pretty much not going to heal anyone because you don't have to fight the boss so it's really hard for a lot of people to take damage or take enough damage to where you're going to get your milestone but if you do want to get your milestone as a healer one strategy that my friend uses is he just finds a trap on the ground or something like that and he goes there as a healer throws down a healing circle and just sits there he just keeps sitting there taking his own damage and healing himself up that's one of the fast ways to get a healer milestone every other class you shouldn't struggle dealing damage in there because it you would just have to deal up to milestone three which is not that hard on any class so those are going to be really easy tips to get more xp if this did help you out at all i definitely would appreciate a like or a subscription because i mean this is one of the most useful guides i'd say for skyblock because you want to be grinding out a lot of catacombs xp right now because the more catacombs xp you have right now the easier the later fours are going to be if you're able to use something like converted wise armor or converted young armor you're going to be smacking later floors you're going to be destroying because of your boosted stats and it's going to be really awesome so i hope that this does help you guys out and yeah i will talk to you guys in the next one Peace out.